Hey everybody, I want to do a deep dive today into something called combinatorial analysis. And this can be defined as the choosing and arranging of elements of sets in accordance with prescribed rules. And it, it might sound esoteric, but it's actually got some very practical use cases. And I want to talk in particular about a case that came up last week when I was working with Paul Lucasen on a geospatial project. And the task was we had a list of six warehouses and we needed to generate every unique set of three. And it sounds like a pretty straightforward problem, but this is one of those cases where language really matters. Because depending on how you define the concept of unique set, and this gets back to the definition I gave earlier in terms of the prescribed rules, that the correct answer here is either 216, 120, 56, or 20. So depending on how you define that unique set and the rules you prescribe, you could be off by a factor of 10 if you, if you don't get those, those set correctly. And so the dimensions that matter here, there are two of them. And the first one is, does order matter? So when we're talking about th sets of three, is ABC equivalent to BCA? So does order matter? And if order matters, we're talking about permutations. And a good example of permutations where order could matter when we're talking about a warehouse con context is in the case of travel time. So it very well might be that <clears throat> if you visit warehouse A and then warehouse B and warehouse C, the travel time due to traffic, flow with traffic, against traffic, the time that you arrive at each warehouse could be quite different depending on the order in which you visit them. Now the other flip side of that is order doesn't matter, in which case we're talking about combinations, not permutations. And the use case here that is common is distance. And this is the one that Paul and I were working on, um, which is that as the crow flies, the distance from A to B to C is not going to be any different than the distance from B to C to A. And so those are going to be considered, in a combination context, those are going to be considered duplicates of each other, whereas in a permutation context, they'll be considered unique. And so as I have here, you know, what we call a combination lock really should be a permutation lock because in that case, order does matter, making it a permutation, not a combination. And the second question and dimension that matters is once an item is picked, can it be picked again? So for example, if we choose A as our first warehouse, can we choose A again as the second or third, or do we have to choose unique um, elements each time? And the term we use here is with replacement or without replacement. So if an item can be picked again, that's with replacement, meaning you pick it, and in a sense it goes back into the selection bin and to be picked again. Um, if the answer is no, it's without replacement. And so moving on here, I'm not going to go through the, the derivation of the math here, but you can see that permutations with replacement are the least restrictive. So that's the one that gives us 216 combinations and 216 unique sets. And combinations without replacement is the most restrictive, giving us 20. And so, as I said, we're just going to use these formulas. If you're interested in the derivation, I can certainly provide that, references to that in the, the YouTube comments. But for now, what we're going to do is just use this as a way to check our Power Query results. So we'll remember 216, 120, 56, and 20. So let's now jump into Power Query and see how this, how this all plays out. So what I've got here is, is a very simple case. Um, I've just got six, six named warehouses. And then what I've done is I've developed a Power Query function, an M function that we'll talk about a bit later in terms of using that to process combinations and permutations. But for now, what we want to do is develop that first use case which is permutations with replacement, the least restrictive of the, of the bunch. And the way we do that is through what would, 
in DAX what we would think of as a cross join. And the way to do that in Power Query is just we can take this, this warehouse table, reference it, and then we'll call this um, we'll call this permutations with replacement. And then a simple way, there's a number of ways you can do a cross join in Power Query. The easiest way that I've found is to just go add column, custom column, and then in the custom column formula, reference the warehouses table. And what we'll find when we click on this is it generates a nested table. And then if we expand that, what we'll see is we get this location one. And this is now the, the combination, every possible combination of two. So it takes the first six, references those against the other six combinations. The second six, and it does the same, all the way down to we have 36, 36 different, different sets. And then what we can do for, for the third one, is do this again. So we go add column, custom column, warehouses, and when we expand this, what we'll have is ideally the 216 that we would have as the permutations with replacement. And you can see from down here, three columns, 216. So that's our first use case. So the next, the next use case we've got is permutations without replacement. And so what we're thinking of here is basically everything that's got a repeated element. So this, this one here, number one, has a repeated element. Number two has a repeated element until we get all the way down to like number number nine here, where we've got Arlington, Bethesda, Fairfax, no repeated elements. And what we can do here is take a look at this, this custom function. We go to the advanced editor. And what this does, this, this basically asks for a table and then it does a sort of the locations, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But the important part here for the with replacement or without replacement is this is distinct function. And what this does is just basically takes a list of, of elements and determines true or false whether it's distinct. So whether it has any duplicates in the list of items. So let's jump out of the advanced editor and give this a run. So if we go here and then we select the permutations with replacements table and we hit invoke, what we'll see is it gives us these two new columns. So sorted locations, which we'll talk about later, and then the is distinct. And as we talked about previously, the first eight records all had duplicates in there. And that ninth record was the first time we saw the distinct Arlington Bethesda Fairfax combination. And that's the first one that shows up true. So this is good indication that this is working. And then if we think back to the numbers that we had on the, the factorial calculations, um, we're expecting 120 records if we take out the, the non-distinct records. So if we filter here and take out the false, what we get is down here exactly the 120 that we're expecting. So we can take this and rename this um, permutations, in this case without replacement, and there's our second use case. So now what we can do is go back and let's invoke this in another time. Again, on, and let's start with the permutations with replacement, the, 
the least restrictive table will invoke that. And now what we want to do is we're talking about combinations and we're talking about combinations with replacement. So it's okay that we have duplicates, but what we don't want is sets that have the same elements, but in different order. So in this case, when we're talking about combinations, if you remember that ABC is equal to BCA is equal to CAB, that those are all considered duplicates of each other. And the way we, we determine that is through the sort function. And if we go back into the, the function and the advanced editor, what we'll see is for that second column, what we've done is we've taken the, the set, that list, and sorted it alphabetically. And then we extracted the values delimited by comma from that list. And so what we've got now is each set sorted alphabetically. So we've, we've in a sense, we've, we've normalized the order to make it easy to find duplicates. And so what we can do is if we go back into this invoked function, if you remember what we're looking for here is 56 records. And what we can do is take this sort location now and say, let's remove our duplicates. And what we get here is exactly the 56 records that we were looking for. So there's use case three um, chalked up. And this is combinations um, with replacement. And there's our third use case. And let's let's wrap this one up by taking again that permutations with replacement table. And by now you've probably caught on to the pattern that what we're going to do here in the most restrictive case is we're going to take and we're going to remove the duplicates because this is combination, so order doesn't matter. So we remove the duplicates. And it's also with without replacement, so we also want only the distinct list. And if you remember here, what we should get is we should get 20 records. And presto, there we go, 20 records. So we've got all four of our use cases. And you can see really how powerful this is in terms of developing that combinatorial analysis that it gives you control over replacement, over um, distinct um, elements, and even in some more complex cases where you've got partial replacement, where you can, you can maybe select a duplicate element for the first one, but not the second time, um, you can still handle that nicely within, um, within Power Query. So hope you found that useful. If you did, please throw it a like and um, also subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV as we'll have a lot more content coming out um, over the next weeks and months. And um, thanks for watching as always. And keep the feedback coming that if there are topics you want to see us address in these videos, please let us know. So thanks again and we'll see you in the next video.